So, the bottom is done. Today, we're gonna paint the boat. So, we're gonna take off all the uh, masking tape and then remask it the other way and paint the top half on the outside and the inside. And hopefully when we're all done, it'll look pretty nice. Cause it's looking kind of beat on the inside right now. The miscalculation that I did not even think about was that with all the layers of coated I put on the bottom, the masking tape had to stay on through some very high heat days, like 110, 115 degrees here. And it literally chemically bonded the adhesive to the metal and it was not coming off. So I tried picking and knives and blades and everything. I finally had to throw in the towel and get the wire drill back out. And I had to grind every centimeter multiple times to get the adhesive off. So I took the wire brush and I went over all the rest of the metal, all the sides, inside and out. Now they're nice and rough and clean, as much as we're going to get. And now I'm going to power wash the boat and get rid of all the particles and we're going to fill it full of water and see if it holds water. If it'll hold water, we get it nice and clean and dry, it'll be ready to paint. So it's been a lot of work, but we're about there. Water test. So, got the power washer out, I rinsed off all the sides where I was just grinding to get rid of all the metal particles. You can see a bunch of it floating in the water. But I filled it up about a third of the way. I got a little drip right here because there's a bolt hole right there. I stuck a wire nut in there, but it's not smooth, so it's leaking a little bit right out of there. But if I put my finger over that, That stops. So the only place there's water dripping off is the back. Look under here. All the rivets are tight. There's one little drip coming off the center rail. And there may be a pinhole leak somewhere on one of those rivets on the inside where I couldn't get the coat it to. Looks like it's pretty friggin' watertight. Except for where that plug is in the back. So, I think the coat is doing its job. All the rivets are holding. All the seams, seams that used to leak like crazy are not. So the coat it works. There it is. All cleaned up and shiny. Holds water really well. It's all drained out, it's all cleaned up, waiting for the water to evaporate off, and they'll be ready to paint. So, the bottom half's all masked off. The top's been ground clean, and rinsed down and wiped down with acetic acid, white vinegar. The flotation boxes have been ground clean, and the corners are sealed. The inside's completely empty, and it's all down the nice, clean, bare metal. So now, it's time to use the boat paint. I'm gonna put it on an air compressor sprayer and see what happens. This paint that's specifically designed to stick to aluminum, made by Duralux, is very popular with people who have duck boats. It's kind of like the default duck boat color paint for a lot of the big name brand boats out there. But it's a little tricky to use and this is the first time I had used this particular paint sprayer system and this kind of paint is a different viscosity than I was used to. So I would highly recommend that anybody who's going to do this use some scraps. I had an old uh, metal sign that was just sitting there that was basically a target and I luckily went to that four or five different times messing with the regulator, messing with the air pressure, messing with the tip and 
trying to get the can and the type of paint and everything regulated so that it would spray the way I wanted it. Once I got that working, then I started working on those cans and I started working on the floor of the boat because I figured if I screwed any of that up, it would be the, covered up anyway. And one of the things I also discovered about it is that you cannot completely tip that can 90 degrees. You have to keep it at a little bit of an angle. If you tip it too far, then the paint gets up in the head and it starts to blob out in big scoops and it doesn't look good. So you can't overfill the canister. You can't turn the pressure up too high. You can't move too fast. It's just kind of a meticulous thing. So if you're, if you're not used to doing that, mess around with this paint a little bit as a test till you get to figure out how it's going to work. And then once I got it figured out, it was just a matter of you know, stopping and reloading. I always have to mix this paint up. It tries to get a scum across the top pretty fast. It sets up pretty quick. So I would use an old one cup scooper and I was scooping it out of the can and putting it into the base. And then you gotta wipe the base off and get as much of that stuff off of the pieces that you want clean as you can because it'll set up pretty fast. And then back to the boat. So it was back and forth lots of times. The other thing was you have to work one angle up against those ribs and then it leaves a gap on the other side. So you have to turn around and, and work the other angle back the other way. And same thing working on the sides of the boat. I could only reach so far and I'd have to go up one side and down the other and then on one side of the ribs and then the other. And then on the outside, you know, you have to stop and keep getting the stuff that plugs up the head. It will start to stick. But the trick on the outside was that the tape for the masking would try to let go once it got warm and you had to make sure it stayed sealed. You didn't want to blow paint up underneath the masking tape. And then little bugs would get in there and stuff so I made one last pass all the way around and did one final overspray and then we were done. The boat is now painted. Flotation cans are painted. Everything's dry. Looks like it's all in pretty good shape. And the wind has started blowing off the paper and the masking. So we're going to pull the masking tape off and see what we got. Ah, sailplane, float plane.
one step we went from bare metal to painted metal all the way around the boat including a, an overspray over the top of the coated on the back of the transom because it didn't look very good and the top half of the outside and then once that was dry I took off all the masking and wheeled the boat back up by the house and let it cure in the sun for a couple days to make sure it was really clean and completely cured and then it was all ready for assembly.